Welcome to the Middlesex Moments Show. I'm Marlene Olson, filling in for Anna Wasesha. With me today in the studio is Dr. Adrienne Maslin. She is the Dean of Students here at Middlesex Community College, and today's topic is student success tips. So Adrienne, as a freshman, what is it that they should know as they're beginning their college career? Oh, there are so many things that it would be worthwhile for a freshman to know. Probably the first thing that I would recommend above all else is for new students to participate in freshman orientation, first of all, because that's where students learn so much about the college. They get to meet other students. They get to meet faculty and staff. Engaging in freshman orientation is certainly a worthwhile event for any new student. And I would also say not necessarily for only new freshman students. Well, that's but a if, good point. Uh, if someone is transferring to an institution, that student may also wish to participate in some kind of new student orientation because it really is a good way to get to know the college, to get to know the services that the college provides, to get a little better understanding of the culture of the college and, and start to figure out where a student can find his or her niche. So a lot of the things that are going to be presented in that particular format would be things they'd use right away and throughout their entire college career. Where does the college catalog sit in all this these days? Well, I suppose every college is a little different. I know at Middlesex Community College, I think the college catalog is the one most important document that a student can have. And of course now, catalogs are on the websites right, of different right. colleges, not um, it's anymore. not necessarily a print document, and sometimes the website itself might be a good substitute in some areas for a catalog, but the catalog typically has everything about all the courses that are being offered, all of the academic policies, all of the registration policies, withdrawal deadline dates, uh, tuition information, right, right. Um, any information about um, uh, student conduct codes. Those are very important things for students to know about. And it, it's hard to just sit down and read a college catalog, but certainly to refer to it from time to time so that uh, students understand, you know, well, if I withdraw from this course, how will this affect me? How will it affect my grade point average? Will it affect my financial aid? Okay. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, maybe we can talk a little bit about that first week that freshmen are on the campus. Very good. Right? So welcome back. This is the Middlesex Moment Show, and I'm Marlene Olson. Today with me is Dr. Maslin, Dean of Students at Middlesex Community College. And before the break, we were talking about that first week on campus. So we're I'm going to go through a couple of tips to make that a, a little bit easier transition. So talk to Maslin, that first week, what's important for a student to kind of get a handle on? Well, to me the first thing would be that students should not be afraid to ask questions. It's so easy to feel very self-conscious. You don't know where the buildings are, you don't know where your science class is, you don't know sure, where your sure. English class is, and um, and you know, we're fortunate at Middlesex that our campus is quite small, but on some other campuses, which are quite large, it's sometimes very difficult for some students to learn their way around the campus. And students need to remember that everybody's been there. Everybody's been in that situation at one time or another. And it's okay to go up to a student or a faculty member or anybody walking around campus and saying, gee, I really need to know where such and such a building is. Can you give me a hand? Because and people, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do just that. Absolutely. Absolutely. People are very uh, sympathetic. Nobody wants to make fun of anybody. It's oh, just... Sure, uh, sure. Okay, so the student has the lay of the campus, but now there's the issue of the classroom itself. What should they be thinking about as they approach that part of their education? Well, it's certainly important when a student comes to class, even if it's the very first class, that they be prepared. And for the very first class, that would mean bringing a notebook or a binder, something to write on, bringing a pen or a pencil, things like that. And students should kind of look around the classroom, and one thing I advise students is to pick out a good place to sit. Right, um, right. It's not always the best thing to sit down next to the person you know. If that's not a good seat for you, it could interfere with your enjoyment and what you get out of the class. And certainly, in most college classrooms, while a seat is never permanent and you can change your seat, right. people do tend to sit in the same spot all the time. <laughs> but I've always found that, for myself, sitting close to the front 
and not sitting too close to the door where I can hear people walking back and forth and where I'm distracted by people's conversations. So that would be one piece of advice I would have. Most students will find that on the first day of class, a faculty member will give out a course syllabus. Now, sometimes, these days anyway, that syllabus is online. So it may not be a physical, printed out copy right. of a course syllabus, it may be online, but my first, my second suggestion therefore, would be that a student be sure to read the course syllabus. The course syllabus typically, again all colleges are different, typically will give the name of the course, the name of the faculty member, the office hours of the instructor so that a student can come and ask questions at certain specified times, it will give other contact information for the instructor, and it will talk a little bit about the course and specifically what the learning outcomes are for the course. Now learning outcomes is kind of a, a phrase that's become very popular in higher education these days, but that refers to what can the student expect to know by the time the course is over. And oftentimes there are 10 or 12, 13 overarching course objectives that a faculty member wants the students to learn by the time right. the course right. is over. And it's, it's very helpful to have an understanding of where is this course going to lead me? What am I going to be expected to know? Right. So, so that would be another college success tip, so to speak, for students to understand, to read and understand the course syllabus. Usually a syllabus will contain the assignments that a, students has, a student has to, uh, to do during the course of the semester, and also the grading scheme of the faculty now, member. Now, the grading scheme, that's something that can have some differences between not only institutions, but even professor to professor. Is that correct? Yes, it's certainly correct. Every faculty member has the option to assess student work in their own way. Okay. Some faculty may give many quizzes and a final exam. Other faculty will give two or three short papers during the course of the 15 weeks. Some faculty may give a couple of exams plus a long-term paper or a group project. So there are many ways to assess students. And faculty, some will divide all of the assignments among 100 points. Right, right. Other faculty use some kind of 400 point <laughs> Uh, all scale, it's, it's all very different. And to get a sense of how a faculty member grades and what's important, um, some faculty will say, you know, even though I'm asking for about five pages, I'm more concerned with the quality than the quantity. Okay. All, right. um, all of that is usually Attendance found in the Attendance sometimes syllabus. varies between faculty preference, if we put it that way. Come when you need help, or others may say come every single time. I would assume you should take a close look at that as well. Certainly. Because there's definitely great consequences if not actually getting dropped from the class. Certainly. Okay. And one thing, again, that I suggest to students is simply to make up your mind to attend every class. Don't think, it's okay if I miss a class here or there. It's really not okay. And every class, important information is discussed. So, That's a good tip. So a student should always feel that it's necessary to attend every class. Having said that, of course there's gonna be a time when a student has the flu and we don't expect a student to come if they have the flu. But if the student has been coming to every single right, class, right. the one time they miss won't be too critical. Outside of the classroom, what are some of the tips to be successful, especially as a freshman? Well, outside of the classroom, one of the things I would suggest is to get involved with the campus. Most colleges have a whole variety of activities and lectures and musical events going on on campus, and it's important to get involved in one way or another. It's a way to make friends, and it's a way just to feel connected, to have something to really look forward to. For some people, it might be being involved in student government. Right. Others who um, might enjoy writing might want to join a student newspaper. So there are all kinds of ways to, to be involved. At Middlesex, we have a PTK, Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Some students, um, now you have to have a certain grade point average to right, be accepted to be into PTK, but it is a service organization. 
and it's a way for students to make friends, to be part of their college community, to provide service. So there are a number of ways. And If I remember correctly, these are also areas that can be added to your resume. You're Absolutely. actually building your skill sets, you're involved in perhaps activism, maybe you're involved in advocacy, but you're involved. And I think a lot of employers, especially when your resume is so thin when you first go out right. there, when you first right. graduate, that you can add these things and add some weight to it. Right. No, that that's an important. excellent point. And right. uh, students, it's a way to acquire leadership skills, right. organizational skills. So there's a lot to be learned from uh, those extracurricular activities that students get involved in. So now we've talked about you know that first week then in the classroom and outside the classroom what about the greater community? A lot of students are coming from places very different than where they find themselves going to college. How might they connect with their community so they feel a part of something greater and not just the educational experience itself? Well there are a couple of ways. Many campuses will have a volunteer services office so a student can access that office and see what kind of opportunities might there be in the community to volunteer. Other ways are simply to participate in events that might be in town, get to know the town that way, you know, whether it's a local movie theater or um, theater company. So th there, are, there are opportunities along those lines. Okay, so the, there's a way of feeling part not only of your classroom experience, but your campus experience, but the greater area that you find yourself in, Some, sometimes for four years. Right, right. And sometimes there are ways to do that through one's academic work as well. Okay. Sometimes um, some colleges have what's called service learning, where as part of a course, a student would engage in some kind of service activity, perhaps in town, perhaps on campus, but uh, the local community is certainly one area, and, um, and, and that would become a learning activity in that there would be a form of reflection, a form of um, uh, okay. writing up what you've learned. A little learned, more formal um, connection to little, your education, correct. but also still out there volunteering in the community. Correct. All right, another break, and we'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back. I'm Marlene Olson. This is the Middlesex Moments Radio Show, and with me today is Dr. Adrian Maslin, Dean of Students here at Middlesex Community College. We've been talking about success tips for students, especially for freshmen. And we've been talking a little bit about in the classroom, outside the classroom. So now we're going to back up a little bit and talk about academic success tips. So Dr. Maslin, what tips do you have for our students? Well, I think the first thing, and it goes back to what uh, we were talking about earlier, Lean, about orientation and understanding what is available on the campus, the first thing would be to know that your campus probably has a tutoring center of some sort. And along with that, I encourage students to know where the tutoring center is and not to hesitate to use it and not wait too long to use it. There seems to be such a stigma around that, and there really shouldn't be. It's, it's not a competition. You're not competing against the person next to you. It's really learn at your own pace and don't feel bad about that. And if you're asking for help, you're smart, very smart. And that's the thing. That, um, I'm glad you said that because the smart person is the one who knows that he or she is having a little difficulty and goes to get the help that she needs. Um, and it's important to get the help early on because there are many courses where if you don't understand the early oh, concepts, the foundation, concepts, the foundation right. then right. the rest of the course seems to get lost. It's particularly true of math courses. If you don't understand what you're doing early in the course, you'll never understand what you're doing later on in the course. So most colleges have some kind of college learning center. I know at Middlesex there is no additional charge for it, and I suspect that's probably true at most colleges in the country. And um, so the first thing would be to know that your college has a tutoring center and to use it. Okay. Other things I would say, um, I think one thing that's important is to form a network in your class. Um, and this might be making sure that you have a phone number or an email address for at least one and possibly two other students in every class that you have. And that way, if by some chance you do miss a class, we hope oh. students don't, but if a student does, they have somebody they can call or email. And even if a student does not miss a class, 
sometimes it's nice just to have someone whom you could call and say, you know, did you understand what Professor So and So said this Correct. afternoon? Right. It it I took notes, but now that I'm rereading them, it, there's something that doesn't connect for me. Okay. So it's nice to have somebody to bounce those kinds of things off of. It certainly makes sense um, to connect, and I would think with all the modalities out there to do that, whether you FaceTime them or you connect on any way in right. through social media, a lot of these conversations can take place. And you can create your own groups out there, so right. you can get together with like-minded students or students within the same class and collaborate. And much more of learning these days is becoming collaborative. Yeah, I've noticed um, that. Yeah. You know, faculty are, are assigning group projects more often than they did in the past. I think people are realizing that um, industry these days is wants line. students who can yes, work yes. in groups. Everything is a team effort. People don't work in isolation anymore. So it, it's a valuable skill to have. Well, I think a lot of that, at least I'm seeing it in the high schools, where a lot of this collaborative work is taking place there. In fact, the students expect it mm -hmm. when they come into the collegiate environment. They're looking for that group work rather than the individual effort. And, and sometimes when the individual effort is needed, I would think that might be kind of a, a hard thing for some students. Could be. Yeah. It, it, it might be. But um, another thing that you were saying earlier, Marlene, dealing with um, you know the methods by which students connect, um, things are getting certainly, as we all know, more technologically oriented. And most colleges, again, have some kind of classroom management or online system uh, that students log into right. to get information. Right. You know, at Middlesex, it's called Blackboard Learn. And what this is, is it's a couple of things. We call it a class management system because it's not simply a method for students to take courses online. That's a big part of it. But many, many faculty use it to post a college syllabus, a course syllabus rather, to um, engage in additional discussion beyond the classroom time. So students are expected to log on and post a comment, right. um, give an opinion about the, the reading for that evening, and get a discussion going outside of classroom hours. So where this fits in with my next college success tip is to make sure that students know what their online system is at the college and to engage in an orientation. Most colleges will have, I know at Middlesex, we have an orientation so students can learn either in person in an on-ground orientation or online um, how to use our Blackboard Learn system. And that way they can log on to their course and look at the syllabus and look what the faculty member has posted and um, engage in a threaded discussion or email their faculty member and ask a question. So it, it's a, an important way of learning and the student who does not know how to do this may be at a disadvantage. Well, let me, let me expand on that point for just a moment before we go to the next tip. If I've been out of school for a while, say I'm in that 50 plus category and I've decided to career change or, or to just refresh the skills that I have, would there be a way for me to kind of bring myself up to speed? There's so many adult ed programs. Should I maybe for one semester take like a freshman seminar at a local community college just to kind of get a sense of what I'm in for? Well, I think a freshman seminar type class, which sometimes at some colleges are called College 101 or Orientation 101. How to study and, how, you, know. and you know, interact, right. Um, I think that's valuable for any student, um, whether you've uh, just graduated from high school and are now coming to college or whether you've been away for, for some time. Um, I it, think particularly like study skills. If I hadn't been in college for 20 or 30 years or any kind of learning environment for that period of time, I, I would have some, uh, well, I'd have some misgivings about my abilities to study, my abilities to maybe take notes or read or even catch up with some of the technology we've been talking about. I think that would be something of a barrier for me. Right, and I think a, a freshman seminar type class would be an excellent way to um, address most of those issues. Mm -hmm. And you know, every college runs its classes a little bit differently. Um, at Middlesex, we probably would not address the online technological component 
too much, but we certainly would address the study skills, we'd address um, uh, information about careers, possible careers, okay. wh what right. your interests are, what you're leaning towards in terms of your academic program, um, time management skills. Um, so that, that leads me to one other question. This is the sort of class to get to know yourself, but there's a whole other way of learning with the online or the online slash hybrid courses. Are they for everybody? No. Ah, no. Well, that was a definite answer. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely not for everybody. I think the, the idea of an online course is fabulous. I think it's, it's been a wonderful addition to the, the ways in which students can learn. Certainly for students who can't get out of the house for whatever reason because of caregiving for children or parents or they might have a disability, it brings the education to them. So it's a wonderful way um, in that sense to learn. There are some people who just really feel intimidated either by the technology or who may not be self-motivated enough to, to do it at home. Um, sometimes watching the baseball game is just too tempting and uh, <laughs> even though you should be logging on to your course, it's easy to say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Right. And then the next day <laughs> comes around and there's something else that interferes. So you really need to be self-motivated to um, successfully participate in online learning. Now, it certainly has its advantages, and the one, the big advantage that I see, for um, certainly for many people, is that because it's so um, oriented towards the written word, that the student engaged in online learning can reread something many, many, many times. Whereas in the classroom, if your professor says something and then talks about something else and something else. Um, sometimes if you don't get those notes down, that moment's right lost. away that moment, that moment is lost. Um, so online learning does have the, uh, give the students the luxury to go back and read it again and think about it. And, That's good, you know, That's good. yeah. Well, I interrupted you with your uh, countdown to all the tips for success, so let's get back to that. Okay, well, um, another college success tip would be for students to um, make sure they know how they're doing in each of their classes. Um, it's important for students to get feedback from faculty members. And if a student feels that they're not getting enough feedback, doesn't know um, whether they, they've understood a concept right. or not, um, maybe a test hasn't been returned yet, and um, it's important to ask. Um, just ask the professor. Uh, faculty generally welcome students coming and um, students, students who are serious about their education and it's fine for a student to say, you know, I, uh, I'm not sure how I did on the last test. I understand you haven't returned it yet and that's okay, but right. can you just give me a sense of how I'm doing in the class? Should I be going to the tutoring center and <laughs> um, uh, getting caught up on certain concepts or, or did I understand it better than I think I did? Um, but it, it's important to stu for students to know um, what they need help in, where they're um, being successful, so that they can then um, plan the rest of their semester and know whether they should seek extra help, whether, you know, things are going okay. So is there any overriding tip as we're coming to the end of the show here that a student would do well to master or to understand as they're going through their entire college career? I think probably the most important thing um, would be self-advocacy. I think it's important for a student to be able to go up to a professor and say, I'm not understanding this. I really need some extra help. What do you suggest I do? Is there another book that I can supplement, uh, supplement my learning with? Maybe that textbook isn't uh, the best for that particular student, and while it might be a fabulous textbook, maybe there's some, some other literature that will help the student. Um, maybe the professor can give that student a little bit of extra time uh, during office hours. Other areas of self-advocacy deal with um, going up to a, a student club some evening. <laughs> you know, you see an advertisement for the chess club, and that's something that you've always liked to do. do Walk it. on in there. Good. You know, nobody has to invite you. Um, <laughs> it's okay to walk in and say, you know, here I am, just, you know, uh, can anybody join? And right. it's, 
Good. It's okay to do those things. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show today, Dr. Well, thank Maslin. you so very much. I want to thank you for being part of this. This has been the Middlesex Moments Show, and if you want to visit us, we're at mxcc.edu. I'm Marlene Olson, wishing you a good day.